How to find the definition of plastic and microplastics. How to find a connection between them. I have to say that there is a massive amount of information available on the internet today. Let us first focus on the plastics. In addition to the dictionary of the standard Slovene language, I also searched for the definition of plastic on Wikipedia and on Google's browser, which I think is quite common. Although we can see that the illustrations or descriptions differ from each other, they are similar in general, but they are not as exact as we have defined plastic in other lessons. So maybe another such piece of advice is needed at this point. When looking for information, we should use the most relevant sources. These can be the websites of various agencies, official bodies, and even some schools. Let's look at this table. If we look at the last 10 or 13 years, the most commonly used polymer materials are polyolefins, polypropylene, PP, and polyethylene, PE, which you also see here. They can be present in different densities, as mentioned earlier. Plastics can be classified according to various vital characteristics important for production, product design, and even end use. Based on physicochemical properties, they could be separated into thermoplasts and thermosets. I find it fascinating that thermoplasts are those materials that can be reversibly transformed, which means that they melt when heated and harden after cooling. Therefore, they can theoretically be reused for an indefinite period of time. At the same time, thermosets are a family of polymeric materials that change chemically when heated, so they cannot be reversibly converted and reused in this form. We see here that among these most commonly used materials we encounter in everyday life, 15% are thermosets. So, we have thermoplasts primarily with a long lifespan. Here I also collected the most frequently used plastics that we come across daily. I also added abbreviations, mainly because you can see a label on a package in most cases when you handle a product. These labels are often abbreviated, such as PMMA for polymethylmethacrylate, usually found on the personal care products packaging. Perhaps, as end users, you are interested in which applications these plastics are used. Here I elaborated on these most common polymer materials, adding information on where to find them. However, I focused on these two predominant groups, polypropylene and polyethylene. Depending on the application, they are in many packaging, foils, bags, and toys. Logically, these polymeric materials are also the most present in our everyday lives. How do we determine which types of polymer material are used in which product, and what are their properties? Polypropylene and polyethylene also have different properties dictated by their end use. To the right of this slide, there is a table in which I briefly present the essential differences between the two most common forms of polymers belonging to the same group. And you see that polypropylene is more chemically and thermally resistant, withstands higher temperatures and remains in perfect condition even up to 170 degrees Celsius. At the same time, polyethylene is usable in a lower temperature range. Polypropylene itself may be less flexible. On the other hand, it is harder to be broken, is also lighter, the color of polypropylene is translucent white, and the polyethylene is colorless. Regarding the possibility of recycling, it is considered that both polymers belong to the group of thermoplasts, which means reversibility by heating, retransformation, and cooling, and consequently reusability.